What was the Morris worm? The Morris worm is also known as the Great Worm. So the Morris worm started off with Robert Morris. He was a graduate student at Cornell who created the Morris worm, which is a computer worm created on November 1988. So why did he create it? He tried to map the internet by finding all the hosts online. After the worms infects a computer, it'll send back some data. There were about 60,000 machines connected to the internet during this time. The worm tries to infect other computers in the same network. It goes from one computer to the next and to the next. And this cycle keeps on continuing until it affects many computers. So normally, a worm would infect another computer that already had been infected. But Robert Morris was worried that some people try to protect their computers by claiming that their computer had already been infected by their worm, while it actually wasn't. Because of this, he created the worm so that if it encounters another computer that had already been infected, it would infect it one out of seven times again. Therefore, the computer will now have two worms. So what's the problem? The problem is that over a long period of time, the worm will infect the same computer over and over and over again until there are thousands of worms on one computer. This will then eventually cause the computer to be extremely slow. Remember, it's not only just one computer that is infected, many other computers are infected as well. All the infected computers will become slow as well. This worm was very problematic because if you tried to take your computer off the internet and erase all the copies of the worm and bring it back to the internet, all the worms are just going to come flooding back on to the computer. So are there any solutions to this problem? There is one solution that involves cutting off all the computers in the internet and making all the infected computers erase the worms. Until all the computers have gotten rid of the worm, no other computer can be connected to the internet again, or else they'll just get infected by the worm again. When all the computers have erased the worm, they can all reconnect back to the internet and with the worms all destroyed. Morris never intended for the Morris worm to cause so much damage to the internet. He just wanted to know how big the internet was. Robert Morris was convicted of a felony because of the worm. The cost of the worm's damage was about $100,000 to $10 million. He was sentenced to three years of probation, 400 hours of community service, a fine of $10,050 plus the cost of his supervision. So this is the floppy disk that contains the worm source code. This disk is displayed at the Computer History Museum. The Morris worm was a great tragedy, but hopefully it will never occur again in our modern time. Thank you for watching the video on the Morris worm. This is for my CSE 199 project.